Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. And what is this video about? Well, it's about this button here. This one here that says RAND, which I'm fairly certain stands for random. And what does that mean? Well, basically what that means is that it allows you to randomize the macros in racks in Ableton, instrument racks, audio effect racks, MIDI racks, etc., and allows you to sort of explore variations of those macros and maybe discover things. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to try and use it as a way to generate presets for operator. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of thinking, but otherwise it's going to be pretty straightforward. So before we get started, let's maximize out all the available macros we can have. We can have 16 macros. Let's close the little camera thing. So I'm going to have to think quite carefully about what I'm going to map to those 16 macros in order to get as much variety as I can out of randomizing various parameters in operator in order to get interesting preset ideas. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to turn off oscillator D because I don't think I really need to use all the oscillators. And instead, I'm going to think about what parameters in oscillator A and B and C I can assign to macros, which I can then randomize in order to get interesting sounds. So to start with, let's go with the levels for each oscillator. So let's right click level A on oscillator A, map to macro one. And then let's repeat the process for macro two and macro three for the level of the other, the other two oscillators. So we can see now that we've mapped the three oscillator levels to that macro. And as I change them, you can see that they are going to turn up and down. That is a good start. Let's do the same thing for the course of each oscillator. So let's go to course one, or rather course A, map that to macro four, course B, map that to macro five, and course C, map that to macro six. And let's see what that gives us. So I'm just playing notes on my QWERTY keyboard. Okay, it's a little bit loud. So let's look after ourselves, put a limiter in there just to make sure we don't blow up the entire world. Just a little, little crunchy. So now when I hit random, it just changes. Already it's changing the sound, sometimes to nothing at all. Oh, and they're quite shrill. Let's go down an octave. Okay. Ow! <laughs> sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, yeah, they're quite shrill. We're going to have to think about that. Let's address that now. Let's hit the map button and go into the map editor. So here we can choose the minimum and maximum ranges of each mapped parameter that we've got at the macro. So the course of each... Um, Oscillator, I'm guessing, is in, I don't know, octaves or something, or some sort of maths. I don't think we need to go 48. Let's go up to four for each one. Maybe even three might be better. Actually, yeah, let's go with three. Let's have a minimum of 0.5 and a maximum of three for the course per oscillator. And now let's randomize that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Still a bit plucky, but... They're all kind of roughly within the range that we want in terms of their octave. So already I'm getting sounds, different sounds each time. I'm going to hit Command K and map this RAND button to the M on my QWERTY keyboard. So now I can just hit M and randomize them willy nilly. Okay, sometimes we're going to get nothing. Okay. Yeah, some of them are a little quiet, but... Oh, and then sometimes they're really loud, sorry. Right, so let's think about what else we can do. Um, so actually, you can see that I've got some uh, macros here already named because um, this is actually the second take of this video. So um, that's fine. Um, I'm actually glad I did that because that's reminded me what I need to do. So let's think about what else we can do. And, uh, you know, what uh, what is going to make an impact on the sound of each oscillator? Well, certainly it's amplitude envelope. So I'm going to map the three stages of the amplitude envelope for each oscillator, but to one macro. 
um, which is going to give us some stuff to think about. But let's um, let's address that in a minute. First of all, let's just map the attack to OSC one amp and the decay to OSC one amp and the release to OSC one amp. And then let's go to oscillator B. Let's go to oscillator B. Come on, right? And then let's do the same here. OSC two amp decay to OSC two amp release to OSC two amp. And the same for oscillator C. OSC 3 amp, decay to OSC 3 amp, and release to OSC 3 amp. And then I made another macro for sustain. So sustain is obviously the amplitude level uh, that your envelope is at when you hold down the notes. I thought that would be useful to include, but I thought I would make it um, one macro for all three voices. So let's map the sustain on oscillator A to sustain, and the same for B. And the same for C. So this is still going to be pretty unpredictable, but let's just see what happens when we randomize a couple of times. And that was a fanfare from a early 90s MS DOS game. Oh, sometimes we get nothing. Okay. So now that we've randomized the amp envelope, we've got some um, sounds that are. Um, more bowed, have more attack, and maybe some that don't. Some that are just little plucky blips like that. Okay, that's good. But um, yeah, still a couple of things I think I'd like to address there. Back into the map editor. And the thing is, the, the envelopes in Ableton um, can be quite long. They can go on for quite a long time. So for example, the release time can go on for 60 seconds as can the decay time. That's quite long. And the attack time is 20 seconds. That's a little bit long. So we're going to get a little bit fine tuny here. And I'm going to say that the uh, the maximum range I want for the attack for each oscillator's amplitude envelope. Gosh, this, you know what? This stuff's a mouthful sometimes. The thing with the thing. Um, I'm going to say that that is going to be 500 milliseconds for that one, 500 milliseconds for that one, and 500 milliseconds for that one. And indeed, for the release times, let's say they can be a thousand milliseconds, which is about a second. It's not about a second, it is a second. Uh, let's do the same for that one. And let's also do that for the decay time as well. Let's say a maximum decay time of one second. So I just need to check I've got them all covered. Yeah, that all looks pretty good. So now when um, we randomize them, we're still going to get some bowed sounds. And then we'll also get some plucky sounds as well. Okay, great. Uh, it doesn't end there though, because there's this button here. This is the algorithm for operator. This is how each of the three oscillators modulate each other. So if we randomize this, then we're going to get a different, you know, modulation operator, FM operator each time we do that. So let's macro that to macro 16. So the nice thing about doing it with um, one parameter is that it actually shows you the parameter name uh, when you macro it. But for uh, macros that have multiple parameters, then it won't. So you'll have to name it and it will only give you a range of 0 to 127. Whereas other things, for example, here like these uh, oscillator levels, it shows you the level in dB, which is very good. Anyway, let's randomize that and see. Wow. Randomize again. Yeah. Ooh. Well, organ, almost like organ sounds. It's not a bad sounding organ. Okay. Some of them will get nothing at all. That's interesting. Okay, I think I'm going to turn off the filter. I think maybe I might um, put in a compressor here and compress it like an idiot. So you know, we don't lose all the dynamics. Probably I've gone a little bit mad there. But let's just, we can just kind of... They're plucky if they're plucky. And they're not too loud if they're loud. Yeah. So I can just keep hitting random 
get different presets. Uh, but it doesn't end there. No, there's still more to do. Um, we can also, I've got five macros left. I'm going to save seven and eight for something else later. But for macros 13, 14 and 15, I'm going to map the actual oscillator wave type for each oscillator to its own macro so that we can randomize the wave of the oscillator. So let's go to oscillator A and map that to macro 13. Let's go to oscillator B and map that to macro 14. And let's go to oscillator C and map that to macro 15. So now we can randomize um, the waveform for each oscillator. <laughs> oh my goodness. There we go. Random. 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 Sorry. I don't know what happened. Something. My brain went weird. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So you can really hear that one of them's got a lot of noise. Random. Oh! Random. That's just lovely. Wow. <laughs> Casio xylophone. Uh, right, so let's, we've got two macros left. Um, so why don't we maybe use those for some effects? So let's pull in the hybrid reverb. I'm going to put the hybrid reverb after the operator and before the compressor. Uh, I'm going to set the um, this thing to algorithm. And I'm going to map the algorithm to macro 7. And the... Ooh, do I want decay or size? Let's go with size. Let's map size to macro eight. And now we can just randomize a little dribble of reverb. Um, let's see what that's like. All right. So you already, it's kind of interesting. Just sample that if you want. Put that in your drum machine. Hey. Random. Oh. It's all right. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's good. So I could actually slightly change that variation. Let's pull up the amp envelope for each oscillator. And I could indeed change the wave. All right. I'm quite happy with that. Let's click the little camera and store that as a variation. Now I can recall that. This is good stuff. Let's hit random. Ooh. This is why I get thrown out of music shops. That's nice. Um, let's save that as a new variation. Just click new. Now we've got that as a bit. So now I can call up the previous variation or my new one. Beautiful. Let's hit random. Ah, no. A lot of them are actually a bit samey. Oh, maybe not. No, that's a good organ.
Yeah, save that. Random. Yeah, that's good. Save that one. Couple more. Not that one. That's good. Save that. So yeah, now I can recall all those variations if I want. It's pretty cool. Okay, beautiful. That's fantastic. Uh, let's try it with a different instrument. Let's try it with like a kick drum. Let's go to the drum synth. Let's pull in the kick drum. And let's group the kick drum. Open out the macros and uh, how many parameters have we got here? One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So let's map the pitch to macro one the drive to macro two, uh, the attack to macro three, etc. that one to that one, the click to that one, decay to that one, envelope to that one, and volume. Um, let's leave the volume alone. Let's... Okay, let's go to this channel here. It's not a bad kick. It's not a bad kick drum. Let's randomize it. Oh, beautiful. In some ways, it's actually um, quicker and more satisfying to do it with a device that doesn't have as many parameters. Okay, let's get a little bit more wacky. Let's bring in the um, let's bring in this clang thing and uh, have a listen to this. Uh, hold on. Um, so this is kind of like, well, actually, it just sounds a little bit like what we were just doing with operator, but this is like an FM sort of drum. There's a lot, a few more parameters here. Let's group that and open out all these macros. Let's get a little bit more experimental. So let's start with the, let's do these ones first, map that one, that one, and that one. This is kind of the boring bit, but it's only a few mildly arthritic clicks um, with the mouse, and then we are pretty much done and that's all good uh oh i missed a few out anyway <laughs> oh, i did the volume that was a bad idea so let's unmap the volume and set that to something quite low minus 14 that's fine still really loud <laughs> some of these sounds are dangerous you might want to get an adult to help that's good. All right, um, let's uh, get the flanger in. Let's see if we can just make this really stupid. And let's turn the LFO down. Let's map this to macro 16 and the feedback to macro 15. Just randomize this. Okay, let's get a second one in. Let's get another flanger in and set that to flanger, turn the LFO down, map this to macro eight and the feedback to macro nine. Okay, that feedback is a little maybe set the feedbacks or maybe not even map the feedback i don't know let's just just riffing just riffing i'm jamming all right let's uh let's do that hybrid reverb thing again but we've got more macros to play with so let's Let's go to the hybrid reverb. Let's set this to algorithm. Let's map this macro to macro 14, uh, the decay to macro 13, and the size to macro 14. And now let's randomize that. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. 
Oh my goodness me. And randomize it whilst it's still decaying. Beautiful. What a beautiful electronic crash symbol. I gotta save that. That was great. See, this is what it's all about. That's just randomized and now I've saved it. So if I randomize it again, I can go back to that one. Fantastic. Okay, I think that's more than enough. But this is such a fruity subject, I will most likely revisit it again in the future. So there you go. Explore ways to randomize devices by mapping as much as you can, whether you do it intelli intelligently or completely frivolously, I don't care. Uh, it's a very interesting way to come up with sounds when you're in those in-between phases of not making music, but you still want to play around with sounds and stuff, then um, this is absolutely something that uh, can be explored and is very rewarding. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon now where you can support me and get access to this set plus many other things and all kinds of other stuff, including community-based things and uh, the Discord and other things and uh, the things, things like subscribe and all those things. Okay, have a nice time doing music.